Hey, everybody. Thanks for checking out another episode of the Aaron Advantage podcast. Today, I am joined by Will Ritter, continuing the trend of having other agents throughout their different stages of their career to talk about real estate. Will, how are you doing today? I'm good. I'm in the cocoon stage of my real estate career, by the way. The cocoon stage. Yes. Also known as the chrysalis. The chrysalis. Yeah. Well, depends if it's the moth or a butterfly. I mean, what's the difference? Between a moth and a butterfly? I know the difference between a moth and a butterfly. I mean, what's what's the different stage called? <laughs> I don't actually know. Yeah, we, we got too deep in the metaphor. Now I'm lost. Uh, so starting <laughs> off the day with a conversation about biology, and that's not even what we're here to talk about. Absolutely. <laughs> well, what, we, what you didn't hear was already the conversation about uh, the Rebel Alliance, Jedi, Grey Jedi, and a bunch of other mm. wonderful nerdy things that will be on another episode of the podcast, hopefully Please. at some point. it must be, I yes. think we should do that for sure. But <laughs> today what we're actually going to do is we're going to have a lighthearted discussion <laughs> about 12 listing photo mistakes that real estate agents should avoid. And uh, I really wanted to bring you in on this uh, because, you know, you and I are both uh, seasoned real estate uh, professionals. We've both been doing this for a long time, and it's always wonderful to hear other people's perspective on some of these things. Uh, so when I shared this article, I thought, you know, Will and I can definitely riff on this and have a, have a lot of fun talking about this particular topic. Absolutely. This is going to be good. Yeah. So the number one <laughs> listing photo mistake that was pointed out in this particular article was uh, not preparing the interior for photos. Oof. Yeah. How many times have you been looking at pictures and you're just like, seriously, like, did they even clean the house? It's crazy. Or their curtains are drawn or there's food on the table or, you know, enter 500 other examples. It's, it's always astounding to me. Like I always have the thought of why is the seller allowing this to happen? <laughs> <laughs> like, did they not look at their photos and say, think about their agent and just say, Hey buddy, like, can you come take a new photo of the, whatever it is that's not looking great? Maybe it's just that they delegate like, oh, the realtor will do that while they're there with the photos or the realtor will tell me if it's not good enough. You would think. And I think honestly that, I, that the consumer doesn't know what they don't know. And maybe right. they think, oh, well, this is just how everybody does it. And they don't ever really look at anything else. You're probably right. I think it's unfortunate that uh, you can see some photos like, you know, I, I've seen listing photos where like legitimately they're just taking pictures with like the agent showing in the mirror in the photo. And it's like, oh, it's like, did you not even think about that? Or the seller sitting in a chair, like, come on people. <laughs> <laughs> like, what are you doing? Absolutely. A toilet seat up or something. Yeah. Like, come yeah. on. <laughs> like there's su such minor things that people like could go through and just correct really easily before taking the picture. And even if you don't take it or correct it before you take the picture, look at the photo, realize, oh crap, I missed that and get it taken care of. Yeah. And I do think this, and it will probably get into more detail about this later, but I think that probably this is a result of us not preparing our clients well enough for the photos. So a pre photo checklist, a conversation that we have when the photographer comes, these are some things to work on, to be prepared for. I think that would help a lot. I absolutely agree with that. And that's one thing that we actually have a document that we can hand to people at every listing appointment that I try to make sure like, hey, by the way, when I have my photographer come, this is the stuff that you need to be aware of. Yeah, that's good. So um, another photo mistake that agents should avoid is not prepping the exterior of the home. Ooh, yeah. In our MLS, the very first photo of the property has to be an exterior shot of the front of the home. Curb appeal accounts for as much as 15% of the value of the home. Mm. How many times have you looked at a photo of the front of the house and thought, holy hell, why would I ever even look at this place? Oh, my goodness. You know, and that's something that we have open conversations with our photographers about is, hey, if it's going to be a rainy junk day, why don't we wait until a nicer day to take those exterior photos? Because you want the home to look like, you don't want it to look like it's a dungeon or it's a haunted house just because of the exterior <laughs> photo. You want people to actually look at the photo and say, I want to go visit that home. Absolutely. And if, if they got a porch, you know, let's make sure it's cleared off so it looks like it's an inviting porch right. or something else. Like, let's, let's take a look at all the things that are going wrong with this place, uh, potentially in a photo, and get rid of it before we actually take the shot. Yeah. That would help so much. Now, question for you, uh, because we live in an area that has wonderful seasons uh, that can change sometimes on a daily basis because it's southwest Indiana. Rain is definitely one of those things that I kind of avoid when I'm taking a photo. But do you ever take into consideration like the time of day that you're shooting, like to make sure you get the sun in the right position so it looks as good as possible? 
It's a great question. I do. We are very serious about the sun being in the apex of its trajectory to make sure the shadows are correct, make sure that the light is perfect. We want to make sure that like 10 to 2 time period, typically nice sunny day, maybe a few clouds in the sky for a little pop. You know, I think that is the perfect time to take some photos. Personally. Agree with you more. Yeah. Now, another thing that people fail to recognize when they're preparing the exterior uh, for the photos is leaving the seller's car in the driveway. Ooh, yeah. That's or, rough. Or having the trash cans visible in front of the garage. <sighs> Such an easy fix that just doesn't get done. And it's one of those things that, you know, you may think, oh, it's not that big of a deal. Who cares? But, you know, maybe your seller doesn't want their license plate number blasted out all over the place for people to know about. Yeah, that's true. There could be things that uh, are hanging out of a trash can because they've been trying to clean the house out to get it ready for photos. And it's like, oh, man, look at all the trash these people have. How <laughs> how filthy is the house going to be? I don't know if I even want to look at anything any further. You've touched on a big thing, I think, to talk about is perception. And buyer perception creates reality. Whether we agree with it or not is true. If people look at the photos and they think, wow, this is too messy or dirty or needs too much work. They're not even going to come look at it, even if it's not true, if they think that it's true. A hundred percent. That's the thing that I tell people all the time now. It, before the pandemic was already a thing I said, but even further into getting into COVID and all this stuff that we've been going on, I'm like, your first showing is online, plain yeah. and simple. Oh man. Yeah. If your photos don't look good, if it doesn't entice them to come and see your home in person, you're, you're losing before the game's even started. hundred percent. Yep. Yep. So, uh, now the exterior of the home is obviously something that you got to get in one or two photos to make it look as good as possible to even entice them to look any further into the home. Once we get inside, there's a lot of other listing photo mistakes that a lot of people make that are going to be an issue that needs to be addressed. One of which is showing pets or the evidence of pets inside the house. Thanks for, thanks for turning the monitor back on. <laughs> no problem. We got some notes down here uh, for those of who are watching on video, and uh, we got to make sure that we can actually continue to see them, and that was one of the things I didn't take into consideration. But Will the Thrill made hey, sure you, to man. keep me going. So let's talk about uh, photos that are evidencing pets inside the home or even showing the pets themselves. What You just talked about how perception creates reality. What kind of perception do you think that puts in the buyer's mind? You know, it's hard. It's hard to not be biased for your animals. Everyone loves their animals. Everyone loves their pets. Some consider them their furry children. But the point is that the article makes and that we agree with completely is that some people just don't want to know that you have pets. They don't want to smell the pets. They don't want to see the pets. Smell the pets is the big thing. And yeah. that, and the problem that most people think is, you know, I have a dog now. Thanks, Kendra. And, uh, <laughs> I don't think my house smells like dog, but it could just be that I'm nose blind to the fact because I live there with my dog. Yep. But the other thing is, is if people just see the evidence of me having a dog, like dog bed or a food bowl or anything else, they may not realize I only have a five pound Yorkie and they may already have in their mind, oh, he's got a huge Rottweiler that's drooling all over everything, chewing it all up and the house is probably going to be in terrible condition. Dude, you're absolutely right. And that's, I think that's one of the things that we can tie a lot of these together with is you are making this home someone else's. Right. You're marketing it for someone else, not for you. So you may want all the shrine to your children on the wall and you know the 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 bust of your dogs and all the past dogs that you've had on your mantle, <laughs> but nobody else wants to see that. It doesn't impress anyone but you. And that's cool for you. So right. move it to your new home, but let someone else just see the blank palette of what your home could be. The conversation I have with every seller is, I understand that this is your home, but that's not what I'm selling. What yes. I'm selling is this house. So we need to make this house less of your home. And people finally recognize when you say it that way, oh, yeah, that makes sense. I'm like, we're putting a product on the market. We're not selling your home. So we need to really kind of change the perception of the buyer coming in mm -hmm. to not look at your personality, your decoration, your bust of your – pets past <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and try to neutralize it as much as possible. That's brilliant. That's really good advice. Yeah. Now you, you also touched on the fact that you may have a gallery wall of all your children and all these other things or these knickknacks and shrines and all this stuff. Clutter in photos is one of the biggest problems that I see a lot of times. Can, can you touch a little bit on, on some of the crazy clutter that you've seen and, and kind of the, the thought process you have when you see these photos? You know, yeah, you, I'm sure you've got some good stories too, but it, as, as far as stories go, I mean, every, everyone's seen the home that needs to be professionally organized and isn't, you know, you don't normally see like the hoarder necessarily. Most people are just going to be what I've found the most consistent thing that's clutter that people don't think about 
is the kitchen counters. Yes. So you've got the coffee machine, you've got the espresso, you've got the the tea maker, you've got all of your... You got your air fryer, you got your George Foreman yeah, grill, you got absolutely. your toaster, your microwave, all these different things. And it's perfect. You may have them all organized perfectly on your counter, but it still clutters up the space. And you know what that perception is? There's not enough room in this kitchen. Yes. And the kitchen and the bathrooms are two of the biggest sellers in a lot of houses. And all you're doing is sending a signal to the buyer that... <laughs> There's not enough space for your stuff here. Yeah. I've got all those things too. I need double the <laughs> counter space. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, you talked about uh, getting into uh, the kitchen and this is the one that the the point of this or this point in this article that just drives me absolutely insane. <laughs> and it's one of those things that every time I see it, I'm like, who cares? Seriously. The close ups. Oh, yeah. The close-ups of the running faucets. Congratulations. You have indoor plumbing. Yeah, that's the incredible. The bare minimum requirement for most of my clients. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> no, it's, I don't see those. Do you see those a lot on MLS? I don't see them very often. I, I don't want to call anybody in particular out, but there's definitely a, a company that comes to mind that I see those photos quite often. Wow. It's interesting that they pick the running faucet. Like, do you do a close up of the ceiling fan? Do you do a close up of the outlets? I don't know. Like, you know, how you do you just, pick? You just hit another point that, that there are a lot of times where people have running ceiling fans in the photos. And it's like you just have a whir in like a blurred image in the top of the uh, ceiling in the photo. And it just that's those two things together are two of my biggest pet peeves. They <laughs> drive me one. crazy. <laughs> crazy and it's like like if the faucet was like some kind of amazing immaculate piece of technology that nobody else has ever seen before cool but we've had indoor plumbing for you know well over 100 years now well and to your point if it's some immaculate incredible faucet that probably faucet is going to be in a very high-end home and that high-end home probably is going to have many other better features <laughs> than a running put, faucet yeah <laughs> on a listing than the faucet Oh my goodness. Uh, another thing that I see a lot of times that drives me insane. And I actually had a buyer that said this to me one time, don't send me any more of company X's listings oh. because their photos are so overprocessed. It looks so good online yes. that I'm always disappointed when I walk through the door, man, you bring up a great point there. I, I have a friend who is a realtor and he is known for taking photos that look almost like watercolors. And that's beautiful if you're going to hang it in your art gallery. Right. But when you're trying to, as you said, you're trying to incentivize people to come to the home, you don't want them to walk and be disappointed. Like, right. Oh, why isn't there purples on the, you know, or whatever color is being accentuated in this watercolor? It just doesn't make sense. It's not really what the house looks like. And that's something we have a duty to actually show a true representation of what the property looks like. And I think that if you overprocess a photo, like, don't get me wrong, I'm all about, you know, balancing light and uh, maybe uh, using some box brownie enhancements sure. to make it look a little bit better. But a true representation is something that I think is a necessity when you're trying to help somebody sell their house. Yeah, I agree. There's and maybe an unpopular opinion I have, but if you are taking an exterior photo and as you said, landscaping is one of the most important things as far as curb appeal. If there's a small little patch of maybe dead grass, you know, Photoshop some green into that patch. Right. Absolutely. But when you're Photoshopping the entire photo, <laughs> so it looks like a completely different home or it came out of a magazine or something, it's right. just not reality. It's not. And it's unfortunate. And it's one of those things that you, a lot of people think, oh, I'm helping the seller out by making it look as good as possible. But what you're actually doing is setting an unrealistic expectation for the buyer, which ultimately can kind of bite you in the butt on the back end. 100%. You're absolutely right. So these other two things, uh, it's, it's, two sides of the same coin and it's either having not enough or too many photos. That's good. Yeah. You know, not enough photos. There's, there's a, there, there's some thought that I've heard in the past that some agents use as a strategy of leave them wanting more. Ooh. Okay. Lure them in, make them really want to see this home in person. Oh yeah. But when you only put one photo of the exterior, that doesn't leave them wanting more. It makes them wonder what the hell's wrong with that house. And they steer <laughs> yes. clear of it, right? <laughs> exactly. Absolutely right. Oh, my gosh. Well, so what would your advice be for the balance between too few or too many? That's a great question. You know, the too few, obviously, if you have a photo of the exterior and nothing else in the home, that's too few photos. For sure. I think you absolutely should have pictures of at least every room in the house. Like there's a lot of times where people just don't take photos of an entire bedroom. That's for fair. no reason. It's yeah. like, hey, there's a bedroom. Show it. Maybe there's something in the bedroom that doesn't need to be shown or shouldn't be seen by somebody. 
that goes back to what I said earlier, to move it out of the photo so that it, you can still take the picture. But too many photos, if you have six different angles of the same room and it's it's a 10 by 10 bedroom with a closet, <laughs> yeah. you don't need that. <laughs> we get the full picture from the first picture. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, we know exactly what's happening in that room. It, it, there, it, There is a delicate balance that you have to strike for sure. But I think that, you know, it it's, should be common sense. Mm. You don't need the close-ups of certain things. You can get rid of those photos. Yeah. You do need to show every aspect of the house as much as possible. If you want to leave something to the imagination, do it with the way you label your photos, which is another thing that I think a lot of people overlook at times. Bedroom question mark? Maybe it's a bedroom. We don't know. Could be. Come see. Come see. Find out. <laughs> Bonus room, home office, something like that could yeah. be like, oh, hey, you know, maybe I need to go see this space. That's good. So um, just photos are so important in the listing process because they are the first impression your property is ever going to have. I think I think figuring out how many or how few you should share is is something that needs to have a little bit more consideration. I think you're absolutely right. Conversations to have with your real estate agent. If the statistic is so important. 95, 97% of buyers are finding the home that they buy online. That's important. They're right. looking first impressions. So you need to make sure those photos are perfect as well, close as you can. You know, you know, you went through the statistics and that was great. I, I think back to our listing presentation books that Tucker pre prepares for us. And it's it shows uh, here's where everybody found the house that they bought. And the first one is like online. I'm like, obviously. The second one is like a oh, real estate agent. Who just setting it up with an online search. Yeah, they sent it to you online, yeah. The second one is mobile device. Oh, online. you mean online? Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> Real estate video. Where do they find those? Online. online. Hmm. So literally every the, – the two people in the world that still found the house that they bought by seeing a sign in front of the house, yeah, that, that does happen on occasion. But – the vast majority of people, everybody is looking online, so you mm. need to make it look as good as possible. You're right. I read that article. It was actually three people in the world that right. found it through a sign. I was so, off by I didn't mean to correct you. Yeah, I'm sorry. I mean, that's a, that's a big number. Thank it, you for correcting you're me. Welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> I want to make sure we set the record straight. <laughs> so the last point of the article, which I think in and of itself should have been at least three points of the article, was certain things that you absolutely shouldn't be showing in any photos. Oh, that's not only question. should you not be showing them in any photos, I think you should probably not necessarily have these in your home whenever it's being shown and this was overly politicized items yes overly risque photos Ooh. And we, uh, i got i got some stories on that uh, <laughs> and uh, uh the other one was it was the taxidermy of course how could oh, i forget the taxidermy? classic now, here's the thing there sometimes i i we live in a fairly rural area we have a lot of hunters we have people who have some tasteful taxidermy in their homes and i think that's okay yeah I think when you have like a room that's just completely 100% inundated. A lovely room of death. Floor to ceiling <laughs> with deer heads. Yes. Uh, and I mentioned this because I've had this question whenever I've been listing a property. I think, you know, maybe that's a little overboard. Yeah. Well, back to the point we were talking about earlier is you're marketing the home for someone else. Right. So, yeah, you can do whatever you want in your own home. But the point is you don't want it to be your own home anymore. That's why you're putting it up for sale. Exactly. So. And the vegans who want to buy the property may be a little offended by the uh, copious amounts of deer heads hanging Absolutely. from the wall. And their money is green and they want to pay you a lot of money for it. You don't want to say no to that just because they have a problem with your deer heads. 100%. The other thing is, like well, like I said, the overly politicized items. I tell everybody that I work with, you are absolutely 100% entitled to your own opinion. I've got no problem with that. I don't discuss or share my political beliefs of any kind with any of my clients or anyone else. Not because I think that it's none of their business, but because I just don't think that uh, it makes sense to have those kind of conversations in situations that it doesn't impact, mm. like selling a home. And if you have an overtly politicized home with different things inside your house, I think that you may potentially alienate some potential buyers who may just be like, I'm not going to go take a look at that property because I don't think I'm going to like those people, or which has nothing to do with the house itself. Yeah, I think that's good. And the way that I phrase that conversation, because sometimes the response from the person is, well, I don't want them to like me. I don't care. But I translate it into dollars Ooh. because what you're doing is you're really saying no to thousands and thousands of dollars potentially because yes. you don't want to take down whatever politicized item is in your home. Well, not only that, let's talk about the market that we're currently in. You know, how many times have we had multiple buyers on properties with multiple offers going at the same time? Yeah. You know, if you've already got multiple offers and you got somebody that's maybe not in a position where they want to try to make another offer because of that politicized item, you're potentially, you know, limiting the amount of over asking price capabilities you may be getting. 
Absolutely. And the number of offers you have definitely can help drive your price and ultimately the dollars in your pocket a lot better. Yeah. <laughs> We've been using those escalation clauses a lot, and that is only determined by the second best offer. That's right. If you have three or four instead of just the second, that's going to drive the price up a lot. 100%. And then the risque photos. Ooh, yeah. Now, artwork is one thing. There's some tasteful ways that that can be done. Mm. Then there's some other photos. You have a story, I sense. <sighs> Uh, thinking back to one of my earliest uh, open houses in my career. Bachelor. Yeah. Nice house. Yeah. Had his collection of whiskeys, which oh. I'm an aficionado. I, I enjoy a good, a good bourbon or two. Yeah. Uh, and then had a collection of vintage Playboy magazines and, and a hardback book of vintage Playboy magazines set out. On the coffee table. Oh, on display. On display, wow. which I think is totally fine if you want to live your life that way. I don't have any problem with that. <laughs> but it, maybe not the best thing to have available at an open house. Yes. Yes. That definitely could ostracize people, which you don't want to do. You, you don't want to shut off your audience a little bit. That's right. You just, you definitely don't want to do that. I've also heard tales of uh, paintings of um, owners of properties mm. in let's say scantily clad suggestive positions. Were they wrestling a bull or anything or was it just them? I think it was just clad? a portrait from the story uh, that I've heard. So okay. maybe one of those things that necess isn't necessarily something you want to share with the world. Either. <laughs> <laughs> so I have some friends who she is an artist and she makes paintings of a certain part of her body. Um, but they're paintings done of or paintings with paintings of. Okay. Yes. Big distinction. With would be very difficult. I don't see how that would work. But she has a painting of, uh, and it's interesting because they're so abstract, unless you really knew what you were looking at, you probably wouldn't be able to tell. So my advice to her would have been that she could leave them up because she almost seemed worried when I mentioned. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and and again, it's it's whatever she wants to do. You know, that that's perfectly fine. Right. And she's very talented at other things that she paints. And um, so... I could see I could see if it's artistic enough, maybe you leave it. If it's really going to offend your seller to take it down, you know, maybe that's not a button that you push necessarily, but it would always be in their best interest to take it down. Absolutely. Highly personalized things is always in their best interest to take those kind of things down, in my opinion. And it makes me think back to another video I've recorded in the past of just like different things that people have had in like horrible real estate photos. Um, and that's a whole other topic we could get into some other time. <laughs> but uh, just I think I think these are things that unfortunately – don't go through the minds of either the agent or the seller when they're getting ready to sell their house to make sure that they're not making these mistakes. Cause I see, I've seen all of these in the last week on listing photos online. And I think mm. it's like, mm, we need to teach people to be better about this. That's good. I think that's the best takeaway is that we as realtors need to be better at educating our clients. Absolutely. We are the experts. We're the pros. Let's, let's help make sure that their home looks in the best light possible on the market. A hundred percent. And that's, that's the whole purpose of what me and my team try to do is educating our consumers to make sure that they know what to expect. Because like I said, at the beginning, I think that the, the seller doesn't know what they don't know. Yeah. And that's why they may let things slide that typically wouldn't be things that other real estate professionals would expect. I think you're right. Mm. Your clients are in good hands, Aaron. As are yours, Will. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, thanks so much for coming in and talking about this today. This is one of several topics that I'd love to discuss with you at some point in time. As I mentioned previously, as he has the hat, the Rebel Alliance, we'll get in here and we'll talk some Star Wars at some point in time. Necessary. Until that time comes, if anybody ever has any questions for Will, you can reach him at? 812-449-1555 or willokatrealestate.com or willritter at fcte.com. Thanks again for coming by today, man. Absolutely. May the force be with you. And also with you. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is Aaron Luttrell. Thank you so much for checking out the Aaron Advantage podcast. If you would like to be a guest, please feel free to reach out to me anytime. We're always looking for other people to interview. 